Imagine the final evolution of an ISD line, the ultimate frontline capital ship from the Empire that possesses obscenely heavy firepower with dozens upon dozens of lasers and turbo lasers. In contrast to its archaic lineage, it also possesses iron weaponry and rockets, the whole undefeatable package. What if I told you that ship exists in Empire War and it is overlooked by the majority of players? What is that ship you ask? It's called an ISD-3 and it is real and functioning in Empire War Awakening of the Rebellion. Finally, a Star Destroyer capable of cracking through heavily shielded MC-80 units along with advanced fighter wings capable of dealing with rebel fighters. And on the rare occasion, if that fails, a dual hangar for redundancy fighters. But before we go into more detail, this video took even longer than the Zeisten class episode. So if you absolutely love all things Star Wars, Empire War, and some good times with myself, Eckhart Sladder and Corey Loses, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. We recently played Star Wars The Old Republic with a bunch of you guys for the first time ever and it was a ton of fun. And you won't miss the next one if you hit that button. But anyway, so you might be thinking to yourself, this ship seems overall far too powerful. What is its drawbacks? Well, there's a few. The ISD-3 is obscenely expensive in both credits and pop cap, meaning it should be treated like an actual SSD. Position it wisely and be sure you're using it for its maximum efficiency, since it's certainly not a fast ship. And whilst its squadrons can defend itself against a single MC-80's worth of fighters, you cannot count on them to effectively counter a full fleet engagement. And if you allow bombers at its shields and engines, that massive credit and pop cat deficit is going to leave you at a huge disadvantage. But now let's get into the really good stuff. Let's dive right into the specs. So after running through the code, we see 10 lasers, 14 turbo lasers, two iron cannons, two missile launchers, two iron ball turrets, one proton turret, two shield generator hardpoints, four engine hardpoints, and a tractor beam. They weren't joking. Not only does this blow for Tech to Star Destroyer out of the water, an SD that is signature appeal is to having raw firepower, it also has a fighter bay and two hangers. I don't know what more I can add here. Uh, this is a nothing short of a compressed SSD and I can't wait to put it into action. So as we do get the ship into battle, guys, my question of the day is, what is your dream ship if you could create one? M make it reasonable. It has to be balanced in a way that it doesn't make it absolutely insane. But yeah, leave them in the comments. We read all of them and I'd love to hear, hear your ideas. Hello. Right, I think we can already tell what it is. I'm just going to go ahead and pause. <laughs> so I wanted to have a full fleet here just so you can uh, see some sort of uh, comparison here. So we have uh, the Star Destroyer Devastator from uh, Darth Vader here. And then you've got the... Uh, well, I can tell you right here that this is the Imperial Star Destroyer. So this is an ISD-1. Uh, very iconic design. Um, again, ISD-1 and 2 kind of share similar similar ship designs, but the ISD-3, which is right here, seems to share very little qualities at all because it's got a different shade, different, like, it's not a perfect triangle that you usually see in an ISD. You've got some concave here on each side uh, of, the, of the hull. And uh, plenty of um, hard points here. So you've got our tractor beam as standard. And then you've got uh, the two heavy iron cannons here on the front of the hull. You've got your laser cannons, your rocket launchers on either side of the front of the hull as well. So they're really front loading the, um, the iron and missiles, uh, ro rocket launchers on the front there. Um, you've got your hangar in the center. You've got your en engines. So, they, oh, there's your four engine hard points. One, two, three, four. Um, and two shield generators. It is the same with uh, the ISD one. Uh, the only reason I, I, I acted so surprised at first is because I forget Awakening the Rebellion actually has both shield generators on the ISD uh, one there. Don't think m many other mods do that. Uh, don't count me on that. Um, just going off memory. But um, yeah, four engine hard points is quite significant. Because, of course, 
in um, mods of like Thrawn's Revenge, only like bigger ships like the Praetor tends to have three engine hard points. Uh, your laser heavy cannon, uh, heavy laser cannons there. Sorry, excuse me. And our turbo lasers across the uh, the sides here. So yeah, a lot of firepower. Just an absolute ton. Can't seem to see. I, I guess like the hangar is is where all the fighters come from. I guess that is the fighter bay, unless I'm missing something. Oh, and then you've got the heavy iron cannon banks here as well. The uh, iron banks. So yeah, and, and again in comparison. With a standard ISD, um, you've got a hang hanger here, you've got iron cannon batteries here, turbo laser batteries uh, and a tractor beam, uh, and another turbo laser battery, another turbo laser battery, iron cannon, dual turbo laser batteries on either side here, um, and three hard engine hard points. But again, this has like the real deal. It doubles up. On the damage of an ISD one and possibly uh, and a two, and and just adds ton more to it. We've got two of these guys, so definitely top of the line. I want to see just how fast it is in comparison to the other capital ships here. So I'm actually uh, going to put him on one, him on two, him on three, and put these four on four, and just move ahead. Oh no, no, I, did. I accidentally. Yeah, perfect. Alrighty, let's. Get straight into it. I'm excited myself. I've not actually seen it first. So, um... And I, I'm separating out the the move commands on all of these ships. is because if you control A, everything will move at the slowest unit, including fighters. So fighters will stick and, uh... And not go on ahead. So I guess it does generally have like a similar speed to an ISD-1. It's not awful in terms of movement, but I I want to get straight into looking at the firepower here. So again, it's got a tractor beam as standard in any ISD. Um, right, chill woman, Jesus. So we've got the Rebel 1 against an ISD-3. Uh, While it's uh, doing the damage... Oh, hang on. Oh my god, yeah, wow. That is a lot of damage. Brilliantly modelled ship as well. Gotta say, I actually kind of like the, the darker accents on the ship. Oh, they, they just retreated right away. They weren't having any of that. We'll get straight into another one there, guys. So you don't have to worry about waiting for me to get into another one. That didn't make any sense. Alright, so we're back. <clears throat> so they've got an MC-80 Justice. Another Rebel 1 standard fleet. So, um... This should be pretty easy to take out. After this uh, match as well, I'll also show you guys what it took to get to build a, t uh, a ship like this. And uh, why it might be overlooked by many people. But there is quite a few steps that you have to uh, go through to, to get this ship. Um, which is understandable because this guy, the you know, is immense. So... Let's get a good closer look at this ship. Beautiful. Underbelly. Very similar to an ISD-1 there. Good comparison angle. But yeah, as I was saying, definitely like the, uh, the darker accents on the ISD-3. Really makes it stand out. But it does relatively stay true to the, to the original design. Just doesn't follow that Dorito pizza slice look as much. Maybe a little bit thinner height wise. There's the MC80 Justice there. Let's go ahead and uh, target. Target that. It, it's a beefy ship as well. So, 
just to compare in terms of shields and uh, hull damage, you've got 60, uh, 6,000 shield points and oh, 10,600 and... Oh, so that's Darth Vader's. So, uh, let's go for an actual ISD. No. Uh, there he is. So, oh, it's the same. So 6,000 shield and 10,650 hull points. And for the ISD-3, which is taking absolutely no damage whatsoever, is um, is at 9,000 shields and 1, 15,000 hull points. So definitely quite a jump up, as well as uh, uh, TIE Avengers and TIE Interceptors and TIE Punishers. So really just a full fleet of uh, fighters there. So obviously, the, so the uh, yeah, you get the Thai Avengers, which you don't get in the ISD one. Here, man, this this thing is so beefy. Like, look, so it's just in comparison. Like, I accidentally brought this hero guy in. I accidentally, uh, well, hero guy, Jesus Christ, Darth Vader. Um, I thought it was the other hero. Uh. Or Zell. But no, yeah. Darth Vader comes right in. Shield generator's already suffering. Losing half of its hull points. And we'll, oh, look at this. ISD3. Full health. So if I just have this ship focused down on the hard points one by one. I can really see. Just absolutely obliterates them. Doesn't matter if you've got shield active abilities, the missiles will push right through that. Doesn't matter if you have fighters spawn from the hangar base. We got far more advanced fighters to take them out. Not an issue whatsoever. So is this yeah, Rebel One. Let's go ahead. Oh yeah, that now they're running. Now they're running. Man, they did not scratch any. Of the, these ISD threes, I'm not. This, they they are not a joke. Wow, they are so tanky. Now I know that when fighting these fleets, the, these fleets are not as big in comparison. I have let the AI just really just go wild for about thirty six weeks, so they should have fleets that respectively decimate us but i'll show you what it takes to to actually build um something like this so of course you need to have a planet that allows you know capital shipyards so uh kuat is something that uh does that and on top of that you need to make sure that you have a space tech level one which is here ignore that we've got a free here right now uh, and then you mean to have another planet that has a tech a space tech level two and a space tech level three that's as far as you need to go and uh, once you've built that you need to go to a planet like kuat that can support capital um uh, shipyards you need to uh, again build that shipyard build uh, build it into a capital shipyard and then buy the super extension on top of that that's a lot of credits you're like including the t uh, space tech levels you're probably talking well in the six figure uh, credits. And then, uh, of course, once you've built that, you can finally build the Imperial Star Destroyer Class 3 uh, right here. I don't think these prices reflect correctly, uh, but the build times are insanely slow. So you'll be waiting a long time for these uh, to be built. So these are absolutely late game ships. So once you've built everything that I mentioned previously, you can finally build the Imperial Star Destroyer Class 3. Uh, and the Class 3 Star Destroyer is a breach in classic design. By massive changes to both the hull and armor, the Class 3 was specialized for combat against almost anything the Alliance has to offer. The powerful turbo laser turrets, iron turrets, heavy laser cannons, and missile launchers make the ISD-3 a very versatile ship and only some ships can hold their own against it i would not be surprised if it starts edging into ssd territory to really take on this ship 
So, guys, if you definitely want to see a video of me pitting this ship against a specific SSD that you want me to choose out of the selection that you have, let me know in the comments down below. Also, answer the uh, question of the day as well. But, um, but yeah, so we've already got two in our fleet there, as you saw. I'm going to go ahead and take this fleet even further out to the uh, outer core and see if there's any bigger fleets we can... Uh, Really just show how strong the ISD-3 is against them. Okay, we're back. So I really just tried to move that fleet all around the top half of that map. There was nothing there for me to fight that was uh, going to be worth a video. Even this fight here, I don't think it's going to be worth a, much of a, of a watch. But I am only going to use the ISD-3 and nothing else. Just so we can see all the fighters spawn and just... To get a really clear view of what damage it can do on its own so here we can see all three fighters spawn so it is a literally like a fighter interceptor and bomber like it's the whole it's the whole shebang i think the t so the isd1 doesn't build the, the tie punisher the avenger sorry it doesn't build the tie uh avenger uh yeah okay Right, so let's see how well we'll fare against this. So range is pretty decent. No, okay. He just did a full sharp 180. Yeah, it is, it's not the fastest ship in the world. I'm definitely having to speed through that. Bro, right, I think you should just turn around that way. Wow, it's a big boy ship. How much pop cap does it take? Ten. So it's a ten pop cap ship. You can only put six of these down. It's not as bad as an ISD, uh, an SSD, sorry, but still relatively big. So let's just have a good long look at this ship. What do you think of it, guys? Do you like it? Is it a design that you approve of, or do you think it should have stuck? More to the traditional ISD design that everyone knows them for. And it, see, like, you'd expect the damage from something like this. You know, it's an ISD. I listed out all the hard points, I showed them to you. You know, this ship's going to do a lot of damage. But what I'm really surprised by is just how tanky this thing is. Like, the. It doesn't, there isn't that much of a massive bump in shields and hull compared to like an ISD-1. We haven't shown the ISD-2 in comparison yet. But there isn't really that much, is there? When you really think about it. So the fact that it's really just tanking through so much damage is beyond me. Like an ISD-1 there would really struggle, I think. I mean... I don't know, unless you guys think differently, but I really don't think, I'm really surprised by its tankiness for sure. All right, let's go and try and find another big fleet to to show more of the ship off. And I'll see if I can build a uh, ISD-2 as well while we're here. All right, here's a little bit of a bigger fleet. I really just want to put the ISD-3 for its paces. So I'm at the mercy of whatever the AI has built, really. Try and get all three fighters over there now. ASAP. Also, I've got to say, I don't know if they're if it's base game, but a lot of the sky drops in uh, Awaken. Not like on a, like a shader standpoint. I don't know, like the texture. Texture is quite nice. I can't tell if that's base game or not. Though so, that's the thing. Right, here we go. This is the fleet we're up against. Bunch of Liberator uh, cruisers. Uh, Munificent. A Corellian destroyer. I think that's it, really. Oh, and we've got another Corellian destroyer here as well. Right, all of these guys against one ISD-3. Just need to get into range, really. Okay. 
okay. So it's range is it's range is okay. I mean, compared to like when I showed you guys the Zeist and uh, class Star Destroyer, that range for the uh, super laser was nuts. So, but here it's a bit more modest. Okay, now we're gonna now we're starting to see some sort of like strain on an ISD three. Actually, I know I mentioned it previously, but if it's really struggling this uh, against a fleet like this, then maybe m maybe it won't stand a chance against an, an SSD. I know when I was re when I was looking into it and doing my little uh, my, my my research at the beginning of recording on here, I, I generally thought like, damn, you know. Maybe was that his long range turbo laser? What was that? What was that damage? Can it do it again? I want to see that again. I don't know what that was. It kind of actually reminds me of the um, the video that we did before it, the uh, the Ultra Star Destroyer, the Imperium. I think it's got that look to it, you know, like uh, the, it's got the darkened accents. It's actually got a similar shape, I would say. So it isn't the same model for sure, right? Like. Well, there it goes. It isn't the same model. Oh, it actually died. Look at that. That is a sad sight. It makes me sad. I need it to melt down. I think if you micromanage the ship, it does a lot of damage for sure. Like micromanaging each hard point one by one. Seems to. Mm. I definitely want to put this ship for its paces as well. At some point, we'll do it in another video where we like do one v ones legit without any other interference. Actual custom fleets. I'll put some maps together for for you guys. It does look good, but I guess, like, I'm always going to prefer the iconic ISD design more. But I'm glad that they did do something different rather than just, like, copy-paste, I don't know, like an ISD2 model and just called it an ISD3. They actually went out of their way to kind of make it look a little bit different. There we go. I think that one's down as well. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not that bad then let me pause so that was a 10 pop cap what is it for like a regular Let's go. it's a nine okay and what does this bring it to 18 yeah and 27 yeah so it's nine okay so it's like a it's a pop cap one less of an isd3 Okay, well, I'll quickly end this one here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the uh, ISD3 in Awakening of the Rebellion, an Empire at War mod. If you uh, want me to do more videos on this type of ship, really dive in and do some comparisons. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I read all of them. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I have been Charlie. You are... <clears throat> I have been Charlie, you have been watching X2, and I will see you in the next video.